Hello, good, e good evening, everyone. It is March 9th, 2023, Thursday night, and we are going to have some fun tonight looking at my model train. Yes, that's right. Not a little train model train, but watching our model train for this Kaggle competition that we've been working on. Hey, if you're in the chat, let me know that you can hear me okay. That would be great to know. And we have some people on YouTube and on Twitch. Make sure that you come watch me on Twitch if you can. That's a cool place to be. And we have some thumbs up in chat, so that's great. Um, so we've been working on this Kaggle competition. One or two of our streams have been dedicated to this. Geminita Bueno, welcome. Haiti can hear me. What's up? So here's the competition that we've been looking at. It's a Kaggle competition about detecting sign language. And um, now that the competition has been going on for about a week, it's had a lot of, I guess it's been two weeks. We've had a lot of involvement from the community. And I have been able to kind of see what's going on there and get a model to train on. Uh, that is one of the public notebooks that's out there. So we're gonna take a look at it and try to maybe do some experiments. Now, one thing I'm not sure about that might be an issue is um, I'm using this machine to stream and I'm also gonna have to use my GPU on this machine to train the model. But um, so if my stream goes down, I guess I'm done for the night. Um, the way this competition works, so let me load up via VS code, is we have a bunch of data um, from pose detection of the people, their faces, their hands, and they're doing American Sign Language with their hands. And it's a video file, so we have different frames of video, and and we're trying to, I guess, take the sequence of the those frames and put them together to make our prediction, right? Um, so I did work on this and tried my own approach to it. Let me show you what my data looks like. So I was doing some prototyping where I was actually trying to create these images of the yeah 2d images yeah i think this is potentially my code where i was making these 2d images using cv2 of the the person as they're making their gestures now one thing i didn't realize at the time was i was making these images and when the one of the requirements of this competition is that it must be submitted as a TensorFlow light model and the model must be less than 20 megabytes. Also, the processing time has some requirements. So you can't have this run very, take a long time to run inference. It needs to be able to run, I think on average, a 10th of a second to make a prediction. And the problem is when I designed this, it was taking a lot longer and the model was a lot bigger. So um, what are we working on to today? SQL Slaughter, I'm just updating you guys on my modeling for American Sign Language Detection. So a uh, long story short, this is kind of shelved for now. I could probably use, I was proud of this code because I created these images um, based on based on the um, video data or the, the data that was pro provided us and basically created these 3D tensors that I was feeding into a 3D neural network to train. But I think it's gonna be too big out of the box to work for this solution. So I pivoted a little bit to using a public solution. And this is the one that I've been using. It's, it's built in TensorFlow and it's a GRU backbone model. So basically what people on Kaggle have been doing is they've been down sampling the, the features that are pulled in to just the hands, 
the lips and I guess no pose. And they're running it through a GRU or one of the top models out there is running it through a GRU, which if you don't know what a GRU model architecture is, it's essentially a simplified LSTM. And if you don't know what LSTM is, it's a type of recurrent neural network, which accounts for, I guess we could just say it accounts for uh, the sequence of the data, which makes sense here because we have sign language where someone's making motion. So the, the sequence in which they make that motion with their hands and the way they place their hands has some sort of relationship to the label, we would assume. Hi, XYAH. Welcome to the chat. How is everyone else doing tonight? So, um, so I took this and I've been getting it to work, but I've also realized that there's been some discussions here on the discussion thread that were pretty interesting. So if we go to look at the discussions, um, Yeah, there was one discussion about left-handed and right-handed individuals. So as always with Kaggle competitions, the devil is in the details. And if you don't know all the details of the data, you're not going to be able to compete with the top level people. One of the details that people have realized and been nice about sharing is that um, they've notice that there's either left or right-handed people posing and creating these signs. Um, one thing we've realized is that the, this data was more than likely co collected from an app where the users hold the camera in their hand and then they sign with their other hand. So even though the signs, many of them use, could use two hands, they're mostly all done with one hand. That would explain why when we were doing exploratory data analysis, we saw that there was a lot of missing hands. That's because they were holding the camera with that camera, that hand. Um, so one thing people were noticing is in the cross validation, it was important to make sure that um, in the small number of signs that there even are out there, where was the notebook I was? In this, sorry, small number of people doing the signs in this data set, you need to make sure that you keep those left-handed people. I'm a left-handed person, by the way. Are you guys, anyone out there left-handed? You need to make sure that you stratify on those left-handed people. So I had to just switch up my experimentation to use a different set of folds, which accounts for that. Um, that's my submission file. You can see here I'm on the leaderboard at, at 31st place, but I basically just have copied this top public solution. This is what I'm using to submit my my data. So you submit using this um, the zip file of the TensorFlow Lite. Let's see here. Yeah, so here it is in the code where they're checking for left-handedness and ensuring the left-handed people are all in, split up between the folds. So this is the post that Robert Hatch mentioned. He's seventh in the competition. <laughs> and I like he how he says, let me give you a hand. Here's my hand-generated categorization of each signer and which hand they tend to use. I counted non-hand for each parquet file in right-hand region and left-hand region. And printed out right-handed count over right-handed plus left-handed. The percentage is usually one or zero. So that means that most people either use all left-hand or all right-hand. And then what people have found out is because there's 21 signers that Wait, messy. Besides category, uh, so what people have been using is 7K fold cross validation. So there is a both hand signers and there's a messy signer. I noticed this signer had huge percentage of noisy data. 
There should be only two possibilities. Either the signer had very bad video quality, so consequently getting mislabeled hands, or the signer and only the signer did two-handed signing in spite of the directions to use one hand. So the directions actually... So why isn't this messy person... So maybe we drop this one altogether. As signer, we, we, oh, this is the competition host. As a signer would get tired providing data, they might switch hands. I would suggest mirroring all data on training that way you have equal number of right and left handed. Probably also use TTA to run. And then Heng says, I do some basic read up on ASL. Indeed, American Sign Language is symmetrical. But if I train with the mirror augmentation, augmentation performance drops. Hmm. Code with Sandish. What's up? Welcome. How are you doing? Three streams in one week. Yeah, I'm keeping them shorter and sweet. So that's what I'm trying to do. I, I, I did, by the way, if you guys don't already check out my YouTube channel. Hold on. This is not going to bring it to me. Um, YouTube.com slash Rob Mulla, right here. You guys should check it out. I just released a video this week about new Pandas 2.0. It's uh, getting kind of popular, so hop on that train and watch this video and learn about the new Pandas. But not now, not while we're streaming after this. Um. So, okay, so we got the... We got that out of the way. We understand that there's left-handed and right-handed signers. Um, now we have this model that is like, okay. So what I did was I changed this slightly by going in and rerun, recreating the pre-processed data to include some of the pose information. Uh, let's see where I did that landmarks. So I decided in addition to the hands and the lips, which they kept, I guess people could be lipping the mouthing the words to what they're saying. So that could help a lot in the model's ability to detect. Could also be very noisy. Cause what if someone doesn't mouth the words when they're making the sign? Um, but I decided also to include some of these pose landmarks. So I did zero, which is the nose location, 10, nine, which is the sides of the mouth, and then the shoulders and elbows all the way to the wrists. And the reason why I thought that would be a good place to start is because some of the motions that they have to do are like, they actually have to, in order to make the motion of what the sign language is, they have to move their hand, their arms in a certain way. Uh, I was looking up some ASL videos. They have like uh, videos to show you what the sign is for different words. Uh, in ASL, mouth shapes differ differentiate certain signs. Oh, Patrick, that totally makes sense then. Why the lips? I, find you, I found you from Why Shorts. Actually keep doing it. Oh yeah, I'm going to keep on doing YouTube Shorts. They're fun. They're fun to make because you can do them real quick and share interesting stuff and show emotion agreement. And in some cases, even negatives. Oh, that's cool. If anyone else, if anyone knows any inside scoop on American sign language and how we can, uh, how we can make things in our model better based on that, please give me all your tips. Um, so another thing to keep in mind, and this is just a weird thing about the data, but it doesn't always detect the hands. So most frames, we have the full face, the full pose, but then the hands are kind of in and out depending on the frame. The other thing is for this data set, we've down sampled to 15 frames and just resized for that. Uh, do you have any recommendations for new people starting out streaming slash machine learning 
programming on Twitch. Just start doing it. What are what do you temp temp or Alex? What are you streaming? Everyone check out temp or Alex on Twitch. Josh is asking what we're up to. We're we're working on this American sign language modeling. All right. So, basically, I've told you guys what I what I did to try to change this a little bit and so I added in these data points. And then I switched to using the corrects or what I think might be the correct stratified K folds. Now, if I try to train this, is it going to shut down my stream? Should I risk it? So this is the pose version of my data set. Um, and I think it was here that I tried adding in this stuff, which is like a dense layer. This was making the model too big. So maybe I make this like 256 because this dense layer was too big. And then I'm concatenating it here with the output layer. So then I'm going to make, I need to set this config flag to concatenate features. And then I'm going to risk training. And um, if this kills my stream, I apologize everyone. And I will see you on Sunday or some other day. Hey, Burgies, thank you for the subscription on Twitch. That's awesome. All right, let's spin the wheel for you. Let's spin that picker wheel and see what it lands on for you, my new sub. This is for you. Uh, sign to the mic. <sighs> Thanks for subscribing. That's really nice of you. What's the best way to determine the number of intermediate layers? Just experimentation. So the one thing I've found with this data set, which is actually pretty fun, is compared to many competitions nowadays, the data set is relatively small. I mean, if I go here onto my, my, uh, and I realizing now that my, the font is probably too small. Um, ASL data, that's where I was putting stuff. So I made this featured data with arms. If we look at it, it's only 4.5 gigabytes for the whole training set. And the model's required to be small. So when you're training this, you can train in like just a few minutes. All right, I hit enter on this. If it kills the stream, I'm sorry, everyone. Let's see how this goes. One thing about TensorFlow when you're training with the TensorFlow model is it will take over the entire, all the memory on your GPU. It'll lock it out from everything else. So we can see here at my bottom right, is my stream still going? I think it is, looks like it is. Uh, the bottom right, the my first GPU here is fully, the memory is fully maxed out. Now the model is training and we're going through different epochs of training. Now, where's my weights and biases? Okay, so I do, I am using weights and biases. I did click on get a free license and this is erroring out. So I'm not sure why it's having me contact sales, but let's just ignore that for a minute. All right, this is the most recent run. If I turn off all these other runs, I guess we can look at this first run. Okay, the first run looks like it might be the best because it has a cross-validation validation score of 0.77. So you think if you look at the leaderboard, 0.77 would get us into first place. This is so good. But the truth is that it it's kind of a leaky validation. So it's over emphasizing or over um, approximating how well our model will do because of the leak with 
uh, left-handed, right-handed, noisy, uh, the one user with noisy data, and then also the, um, the fact that we just didn't stratify it correctly. So this is another model that I trained using the better validation folds. And you can see it's a 0.58. So that makes a little bit more sense um, when looked at on the leaderboard. Although a little bit low, I guess. Um, I guess I haven't submitted any of these, so I don't really know. Uh, one of the big things when you're working on these competitions is it's always nice to have a solid cross-validation score that correlates well with the leaderboard score. For GPU and GPUs, TF config experimental set memory growth to true. Oh, okay. So is that a new experimental thing? Let's see what this set memory growth is about. Nope, set memory growth. Shows how long it's been since I've used TensorFlow. Um, if set if memory growth should be enabled for physical device. If memory growth is enabled for a physical device, the runtime initialization will not allocate all memory on the device. Oh, this is awesome. This is cool. Did not know about this. Memory growth cannot be configured on a physical device with virtual devices configured. Don't know what that, oh, okay. So you could have like one GPU with multiple virtual GPUs being a part of it. I'm not quite sure. Um, so this is still training. This can't be right, eight, two. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Val sparse categorical accuracy is 0.57. So now it's hit early stopping because the models wasn't getting any better and it's just running evaluation on all of the validation data. Okay. So here it stopped here, um, at a 0.57 local validation score. And now I believe it's saving the submission zip file here. That was not changed recently. All right, there, now our submission that zip, but it's still 24 megabytes. So it's not gonna work anyways. It's 24 megabytes. Um, so this won't let me, it won't let me submit it because it breaks that 20 megabyte limitation. So maybe what I can do here is go into my model architecture. Maybe need to add more drop out here. 128, maybe 64. Let's do 64 and then let's train this with our config weights and biases off because I don't want to log this one. And let's only train for one epoch and let's try what Tempor Alex had told us to do. So TF config experimental set memory. Um, why well, won't let me cop copy this? So TF dot config experimental set memory growth to true. This will set it for my first GPU. Okay. And so what you were suggesting was this and then basically do this not for this first one, but for both. That should set that experimental memory growth. 
Um, any tutorials on Transformers? I need to learn more about Transformers before I make a tutorial. How many abilities actually include leg movements? There aren't too many signs that include feet. Yeah, I, I agree, Patrick. Um, that's why after I'd done this, I was thinking about just taking out everything from the hip below. But main thing I did here was I only looked... Well, all the public models right now only have hands and lips, but I included just the shoulders and arms up to the wrists of the pose. The other thing I've noticed is that the 3D-ness of this holistic pose model is not as good as the face. And it doesn't necessarily, not as good as the face in the hand, and it doesn't get the depth correctly. Like those don't line up very well in three dimension. Even though we're given three dimension points, I can show some examples here in a second. Uh, any chance you can push your current work to Git or Kaggle notebook so I can try some different things out? So what I would do is I'd suggest just um, like everyone on Kaggle's kind of doing this thing where they like take the best model and they just add on to it. It's kind of what I did here. Oh, this is an ensembling notebook. So I did it with this one. I don't think he realized he was raided. Who raided me? Did it? Did the sound come in? Xcode, who raided? Let me check this out. Oh, it's Mitz Rox Rocks Codes. What's up, Rocks? How's it going? Thanks so much for raiding. A party of 67. Nice. What were you guys working on tonight? Right now I'm just looking at myself. Rocks codes, give rocks codes a follow. Um, I'm gonna put this into the chat and I am also going to give you a follow right here. Let's go back down the chat and see what you're doing. Uh, I was like, dang, he doesn't even bat an eye when 60 people. <laughs> yeah, no, I just didn't see. I didn't get the sound. I didn't get the sound coming up. So I like was completely in the dark about the raid. But thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a good night. How long ago did you raid? Can I tell you a secret, by the way? Can I tell you a secret about raiding? Oh, I got two raids? Oh, geez. I got two raids. Rocks Codes and Kish. Kish. Thanks for raiding. Let's look up Kish. Why do I suck so bad at this? Um, I'm going to put your info in chat, too, so people can follow you. I'll give you a follow. And, uh, okay, so my secret is um, that recently, the last few streams, I've just not been doing the whole raid thing. And and I feel like I was a little bit bitter because I, I've gone months without getting raided. And then look what happens. I got bitter. And then it actually worked out to my benefit because somehow then I got raided by two people today. Thanks so much, guys. I'm a new to ML and NN. I kind of am too, even though I've been doing it for years. The three of us are newbies to streaming ML. Nice. Does that mean you should feel uh, more bitter? Yeah. The more bitter, the more. <laughs> no. So what I'll do tonight is I'll pay it forward. I will raid people tonight. It's just like sometimes the raiding is... Like, I just want to go to bed. And, um, and it interrupts the, not that I don't appreciate it, but it kind of interrupts your flow a little bit, right? But I guess being raided by 60 people is a lot different. It's a little different than my usual crew, but we ride hard. Okay, so trainer... But that pie, see, where was I? Now I forget. All right, we have our model here. 
Um, I Oh, that's it. I changed this dense layer to much smaller so that it could fit. So it hopefully it's under 20 megabytes. Then I changed the number of epochs to one. And then now I'm remembering, then we added this um, uh, experimental set memory growth so that we can see if the, the memory on my GPU will not be completely taken up when we train. And I don't even know if I have a good batch size chosen. That's usually where I use in PyTorch, you, I use this NV top as a way to know if I have my batch size big enough that it's using most of the memory in my GPU. And now we can see here because of this experimental mode, thanks for the tip chat. Now we can see because of the experimental mode, I'm only using 5.7 gigs. Oh wait, it jumped up to 10 when running inference on the evaluation. Okay, so we ran this for one, we ran this for a single fold epoch, sorry. And let's see how big it is. It's 19 megabytes. So this size should work. This size model should be small enough that it's okay. Um, so we're gonna put this back to 100 epochs and try to train this. Uh, there's a there's a function for that. I use custom library to task manager to get hardware info. Um, yeah, so on on Linux, are you talking about monitoring your GPU memory use? On Linux, there's NV top, which is super handy. And then there's top. There's also like B top that people like. Um, there's old school top. Yeah, and then NV top is like monitoring your GPUs and how much uses. Speaking of GPUs, hey, let me show you something back here while this is training. We're gonna let this train. I'm gonna pull this up. Let's see what the name of this new one is. Is it training? Let's double check. Is it skilled B? Can't be skilled B. Where, oh, oh, that's the other thing. Hold on, getting sidetracked, but I wanna let this run. Let's turn on weights and biases so that we can see the progress as it goes. I don't like that coloring. Um, so GPUs. So those two GPUs, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. We're gonna be holding a Kaggle competition and one random person who enters is gonna get one of those GPUs and the other one is gonna to go to whoever uh, finishes at the top of the leaderboard. So all that being said, you should check me out on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe there. This. And then you should also uh, subscribe on or follow on Twitch. And next week we should be launching that. So if you want a free GPU, this is the channel to be watching. Wait, he's giving away 4080s, but running on a 1080. Yeah, I could. Here's the thing. I could have just kept that for myself and promoted it, but I'm giving it away to you guys. Just running on my own 1080s. It's fine. I don't need a big GPU. I'm not trying to overcompensate here. <laughs> okay, so here are the two different models. 
What's the difference between these two? The dense layer size is 64 in this one. And in skilled B, yeah, let's, so we can, I think we can go in here and see the files. Um, yeah, it's kind of gross how I have it deep down in here, but we could actually see that yeah, this has a 512 size dense layer. So this dense layer is probably not really doing much. That's kind of what I'm getting out of that. But maybe it is. I can't see. Oh, shoot, shoot. Yeah, I need to go here. Okay. So yeah, you got that's probably confusing. Uh, this whole time I thought you guys were seeing this, but yeah, these are the two different models runs that I'm running. Most recent one is here. And it looks like the validation accuracy is pretty much on par with the other one. And I was just looking here at the, trying to remember what the skilled B one, what the difference is in the model architecture. And then I realized uh, we had this 512 dense layer and it was making the model too big to fit the requirements of the competition. And all that stuff. Um, okay, so this one ran an accuracy of 0.56. So it ended up stalling out around here. Was I, am I concatenating features. Yes, I am. Okay. So let's just to give it a try. This is 19 megabytes. Let's just open this directory and take this submission file. And I'll just show you how I was doing my submissions. Nothing too complicated. I'm just taking this uh, data set I created on Kaggle and I'm uploading this new submission file. I'm replacing it. Going to create. Closing that. Going to code. My work. This is just my submission notebook. All it does is it takes this model.tf light and it zips it. And then, and then I use that to submit. So what I need to do here, I believe, is check for updates to this data set, update the data set that it's using, save this version, and then I can go to my viewer. And when this is done running, I should be able to submit that one. Okay, cool. Now let's try while that's running. Let's try something else here. So, what else can we do here? What I'm thinking of, in this training model, I need to get a feel for what this input layer looks like. So we have this number of base features num frames and input shape I just want to do a quick EDA of the features. This should be code. Come on. This is why I hate uh, VS Code version of, yeah, why is it saying plain text? It's trying to make it code. All right. Uh, I'm going to select a kernel, which is this ASL one.
and I'm going to load my data from my external drive. Not this. Yeah, so this version. And there we go. Is anyone still in chat? I don't hear anyone. Oh, I don't see anyone saying anything. Am I still streaming? I think so. All right, so this loaded. And the shape of this is... I'm in love of the with the shape of you. Okay, so this is a flattened version. Yes, imposter engineer is there. Thank you, imposter engineer. All right, so this is the first sample, right? If I do reshape, I think it's 15, if I do negative one, 15 and three. That can't be right. Because this number divided by 15 is not an even number. Divided by three is 2093. So 2093. I thought I was pulling in 15 frames. Uh, let's see what this feature generation does. It takes in uh, segments, segments is three. It's padding and then splitting it up into these three segments, then taking the average, but then it also does this X. So I don't think I even use any of this. We don't use any of that. We just use X. So basically I think this could all be commented out and we're just resizing this to the number of frames and number of landmarks. Landmarks equals the length of point landmarks, which is the length of this in sublist. Point landmark. What the heck is this? Landmarks. Okay, so from common functions, let's import this landmarks. Landmarks is 91. So that's the number of landmarks that we have. So if we did 91 times three, we have 273. So we have the X, Y, and Z of these three different, we have the X, Y, and Z of 93 landmarks per frame, and then we should have 15 frames, right? 4095. But this data is 6279. Three segments, 15 frames, rows per frame is 543. So let's do go back to feature gen. This is taking in our input data and it is resizing it here to the size of number of frames and landmarks. Then it's reshaping it to just to, to make it flat. So this should be 
Okay, what's input shape? Input shape is get number of frames by the landmarks and flag drop Z. So let's do get input shape. Number of frames by the landmarks times the number of chords. What's the number of coordinates is three. Am I crazy here? Three frames. So let's go back and rewrite this frames. Frames equals 15. Chords is three. Landmarks we've imported. Landmarks times frames times chords 4075. This data shape is 6279. I'm going crazy. Holy crap, a billion parameters. Man, I, I wish I knew what was going on right now. I wish I knew what was going on right now. Kish, am I making sense here? Or am I going crane? Uh, oh, wait, we got people in chat. Chai, good morning. I have a meeting, but I'm watching live stream instead. Oh, don't tell my bosses. Nice. Chai, I will not tell on you. Go check out Chai Time Data Science, guys, if you haven't already on YouTube. Great stuff. Watching your stream while I'm at work. Joshua Cruz says, are you working late or do you live in a different times? W Whoa, hey, said Camus. Oh, I should pull this over here. When can you make videos for Plotly Dash? Eventually, maybe. I know that feeling. I crashed my stream three times yesterday running out of memory, so I kept double checking. Oh, man. That's a bummer. Could someone please make sense of this? We What we need to do is take this feature, Jen. Here's what we need to do. Really understand what's going on. Feature, because this is what's been really holding me back in this whole thing is understanding how they're doing this stupid feature gen. Because I, th I think I'm missing something when it comes to this. Well, I'm definitely missing something just in general up here, but uh, All right, so this needs to be code. Um, point landmarks. Point landmarks is this. So these are the indexes in this three, this tensor that have the lip landmarks. Oh, this is the left-handed signer. I don't know why this is in here. I have no idea what, what they're doing with this. But this should get us the point landmarks. Um, these are the landmarks that we're pulling in for the left hand, right hand, and, and so on. If I do PD read parquet on our in, uh, on this one of these parquet files, train, no train. Files, let's just take an example one. Uh, so this will be a, like our landmarks data frame. If we take this landmarks data frame and we query just the frame number is this first frame. And then we look at this 
point landmarks. If you do like an loc or an I loc on this, we see we only have so um, 91 point landmarks that we're pulling in. We're pulling in these ones from the pose, which I, I've listed. So pose, so if we query type equals pose, these are the landmarks which I've identified and pulled in from here from the pose, the mouth and the shoulders and all that stuff. If we go to left hand, they should just have all 21 left hand locations. If we do right hand, we're pulling in all the right hand, should be 21. And then if we go to face, these are, I guessing, all the points for the, for the lips. We need to look up the face mesh landmarks. I think that this was the image here. Yeah. So we're pulling in 61. This is like connect the dots. Is anyone following me? Am I making any sense? Assume with the different frame size. I think it's 15. It would be cool if I coded this in Jupyter Dash. Got to alert doing homework. Okay, I that's cool. Okay, so connect the dots, guys. We're doing 61, 185. Wait, 185? Oh, this is D-Lib. That's why. We need face mesh. Face mesh. That, so we had the wrong dots to connect. We had the wrong dots. Come on, face mesh. Is there any version that shows us the each point and what it's associated with? There's got to be an image somewhere. Okay, maybe it's just too crazy to try to see. It looks like 314 is there. Zero is in it. Is zero in it? Let's just trust the fact that these are just the lips. Oh, geez. Yeah, zero's in here. Let's pick another random one. Four oh, or, or one that we can see in this image. 267 should be in here. 267 is in here. Okay, so these are all the lips landmarks. Okay, so this is our data frame as it's pulled in. Now let's do let's figure out what this thing is doing. Segments equals three. All right, so these are some other constants that we're we're calculating, and then we need this from common function import we could kind of import all this stuff read json file and then oh we should probably get this flatten means tf is not defined All right, so now all this works. Load relevant data subset is not. Feature converter. Okay, feature converter is just. And then we're going to say quick test equals true. Quick limit equals. Actually, I should I should pull this from my script that creates the features. Let 
Yeah, yeah. And then I should pull in these um, from here, my base directory. This is where all that should come from. This is a mess, I know. Import JSON um, from TQDM notebook import TQDM We're just trying to get to the point where I can load this. All right, so now let's make a feature convert. Let's clean, let's tidy this up a little bit. I think half of this can be deleted, but I might be, be might be mistaken. What's this TF NAN mean from? That's this function. It's Oh, it's imputing the mean value when the when a null exists. Okay. Let's import that too. Let's do this. And let's make, oh shoot, did this all reset? It did. I don't think we need this anymore. I think we made our point on that. We have our point landmarks. We have this data, which we know is that size. But we really want, what we really want is just to get here and to recreate some of this. So let's go ahead, run stuff until we get some stuff. What is a Python? I don't know what a Python is. Someone asked, came to say hi and good night. Good night, MMD. Oh wait, what is the point landmarks are? Oh wait, that is what the... I thought it was just a model output, but it's like a standard thing. Why are you able to just Google it? Oh yeah, so the, this model that we're building is built upon MediaPipe's output. MediaPipe is developed uh, like a state of the art pose and uh, face recognition model. It's open source in the sense that you can run it um, with Python and run it on iOS devices, all this stuff. Uh, but check out MediaPipe. So that's what these data points come in from. And that's like our input data that we're trying to use to predict sign language. Makes sense? Might not, but... All right, so now we have a feature converter and let's load in an example. All right, so we're gonna load in this data frame, which is our training data. Then we're just gonna load in the first one, as an example, we're going to do convert row. What is convert row? It gives us X and the label to convert row of the row. Uh, and I need to break after this. I'm glad that did not work import OS no such file or directory of course there's no directory like that because this is not kaggle dot thing this should be our base directory and okay so it work it work. Uh, let's look at the length of this X value. It should be the same as 
What? Let's look at the shape of this. It's a one by six, two, seven, nine. Six, two, seven, nine is this shape up here that I was trying to understand how, how we got that. So now we need to just dig into this feature gen and understand what's going on. And maybe we should just print sizes. So print X shape. First X and we'll print the X shape. After gather. Then we'll do after resize. After reshape. Although I'm sure I know what I think I know what this is doing. Oh, and then it does concatenate the X list. That's why it's bigger. Because it's using these averages. I don't like the fact that it's using that. Variable X is referenced before assignment. Okay, that's going to be a problem. This needs to be X in. Um, let's do all this in one cell. Import OS. Convert this one row. And then let's look at this output. All right, so it comes in 23, 543 by 3. 543 should be are 91 landmarks times three times 15 frames. No, just 91 times three. This one happens to be 23 frames long. Just this one example, this first number could be different depending on which, um, which uh, f one we're choosing. So if I did like a sample, if I do a sample one here, this will just choose a random example from our training data. Why did it just jump out there? Please don't make me reset everything. Yeah, it's going to make it's just restarting this whole thing. And that's annoying. All right, so now we're randomly sampling. We should be. So yeah, so this first value uh, you can see it's 42, it's 23, it's 20, it's 18, it's 30, it's whatever, because um, because the number of frames in the video is not consistent. It's not always necessarily the same. So that's why we're seeing this first number change on the input. Then we do a gather, which only that, what that does is subsets to the 91 features that we want. That makes sense. And then it resizes it to 15 by 91 times three. But this is after adding all this segmenting averaging. So what if I had it return Return X here, just so we can see what it looks like when we output this. So now we're just getting this X shape, which is a tensor of 15 frames by 91 by three. We probably should also print the row sequence ID, I think it's called.
Oh, this is row one, sequence ID. All right, so we're running for this sequence ID and we have this output, which is 17 frames. If I wanted to plot this, I could just do, if I wanted to plot the original version of it, I could, and we could see the, let's see my create 2D images one. Um, so if I wanted to take this rows and let's kind of hide this stuff. If I want to take this row file name, this path, basically like we do here. And we want to read this. This is really important that we understand how this data works. So this is our parquet file. And if I wanted to show the image of this that in, with my um, create, what's my function called here? Create 2D images. Yeah, so let's just basically run this code. But instead of on that file, we'll run it on this path. Boom, wham, bam, thank you, sir. Error invalid syntax. Probably because I need another thing here. Sign color is not defined. I really need to abstract these out into its own uh, script. For the time being, this is a huge mess. Everything I'm doing, I just need to start from scratch. Um, okay, so plotting this, P PLT is not imported. Uh, import mat plot lib pi plot as plt all right so this is these are the 17 frames and what the person is doing with their hands what is the label row this this sign is for mouth it's kind of hard to see that the person's doing mouth but it does look like they're putting their hand up to their mouth right so that's the raw input data plotted out it's 17 frames worth of that that's that was all just an exercise for me to show you that we could plot that out but at this point we only have the 91 points 15 frames of the 91 points so it's actually padded it's resized by padding this to make it longer because it's only sorry it, it's reduced it by two frames to make it down to 15 frames in this X tensor that we have. So X that shape 1591. So let's go and take the first, can I make this into NumPy? Oh, it already is NumPy. Now, if I take this, make this into a data frame and let's plot x equals the first one y equals this so we're just plotting it in two dimensions and style is going to be this this is what the data looks like <laughs> and it's hard to really make out what's going on Oh, okay, so it's upside down. 
there we see the lips and there we see the hand i think so i think i need to invert this But now I'm I'm actually now seeing why this arms probably don't help. Kind of. So it's a little hard to understand what's going on after. So yeah, basically this, this should be plotting. Some of these dots are the hands. Some of them are the shoulder and arms and these ones cl clumped together are the lips. Everything's inverted on the Y axis because of how Matplotlib plots. But just, just believe me. Yeah, these are really spread out because the elbow's way down here and the hand's nowhere near it. Um, is there a frame? Like if I take frame 15, this actually looks like decent. Frame 15, okay, frame 14 is actually frame 15. So now the hand is down a little bit. The lips are still over here. I really wish I could flip it so it would make more sense. Temp DF one rename columns. Zero is X, one is Y, and two is Z. And then I'm going to make Y times negative one. And then let's try to plot this. Yeah, there we go. So now it's the other way. So the hands are here. This is the arm, shoulder. There's the there's the mouth. And then some of these dots I think are uh, the ones that I pulled from when I took the pose, nose, and uh, mouth locations. It's definitely hard to tell unless you have these connections in between. It's really hard to tell what's going on. I almost feel like we need to encode the location of them. Okay, what's chat saying? Um, but a lot of them are similar key point mappings that at least it can easily test on all major post estimation data sets. Someone said 69. Okay, good night, Rob, and good luck. Thanks, Mario. Hello, says Lil Davis, and how are you doing, Ralph? says Ralph. I'm doing good. I'm just trying to wrap my head around how this is working. So I think I'm fine with this resizing. I think it works well. The real question is now, what is up with this data after reshaping? It's basically should be three more segments of the average value. So it's taking the flattening it and adding the means and standard deviations. So let's get the output here. So the output here Oh, yeah. So that's probably why Is it just concatenating that to the end? It's putting zeros in the null values. After reshaping, this should be, yeah, this is just one long string and uh, a one long array. It's just flattening it from 2D to, to 1D. And then it appends this stuff on the end. So 
So the final shape is this 629. So 629 minus 4095 is 2184. 2184 divided by 3, 728. That's where it's doing this padding. So standard means and standard deviation, I think it's like three times two, because it's three different channels, or X, Y, and Z locations times, ah. I don't think this is good. Let me know if you're interested in a job open to relocate in New York. No, I'm good. I don't want to relocate. Thanks though, Diecast. Hey Rob, first time watcher for a live stream. Trader Mix Stockster. I like your username. That's a really cool username. Trader Mix Stockster. Well, this stream is probably boring some people to death. But what I've taken out of it is I've understanding more how this data is set up. I don't know why you don't just make a 3D. Yeah, I kind of feel like we should redo this. Have it store the features in 2D. Don't do this averaging stuff. Don't, don't do this flatten with means. Maybe, yeah, I feel like that's just kind of a holdover from what they were doing before, what some of the early models were. And I'd rather have more, I'd rather have more, um, frames as opposed to this averaging stuff um and then let's see in the model see right here it's converting it into the number of base features by the number of frames input shape. I don't like, it. yeah. In order for this GRU to work well, I think what we need is this to be formatted correctly. And instead of having the model do it, I don't understand why we wouldn't just do it in our feature gen class so what i'm considering right now is stripping this stuff out stripping where we append this regenerating all the features and then trying to train a model on that with more frames because i think this resize this image dot resize it's Resizing across I think it's resizing across the dimension of frames. So this takes care of that for us. We don't need this. Then why do we flatten? Why do we reshape here? Why don't we just leave it as two dimensional and then we can, sh we can store it that way, right? There's no reason why we couldn't have a 3D NumPy array. Let's try. So basically what I want to do is return this X before any of this other stuff is concatenated in. I want to see what this looks like. Our X shape is like this, 4095. Okay, so it is flattened here. I want to return up here. Now if I run it, 
Our X shape is 15 by 91 by three. We want to keep that 15 dimension in it for the for the GRU. The GRU wants this to be should be along that dimension. These other two could be flattened out. Um, so we could do like a reshape this to negative one, or sorry, 15 negative one. This will make our new shape. Negative one will just um, take everything else out. Or, or, or we'll just fill this in with whatever value will make this reshape work. Um, so now if we have this 15 by 21, so basically what we'd want to do is return uh, return the reshape of negative, uh, sorry, of num frames, negative one, run this. Oh, so we can't do reshape because we're converting it to a tensor after this. Uh, we would have to do tens, we're doing a numpy reshape here. So this needs to be TF reshape x into negative one num frames. Should put the frames first. We look at x's shape, it's now it's 15 by 273. And then we should be able to let's do the first 50 of these. And let's see how we did it here. Right. Um, so basically now we want to load convert and save data. Now that we have our new, feature converter. Convert and save data, but we also want to set this to be quick test equals true. I progress not found. from not TDM notebook from TQDM straight up. Could not broadcast this array of this shape into this shape. Okay. So what we actually need this, what we're concatenating this into needs to be in the total in the new shape of total. frames and then we just know it's uh, 273 num frames not n frames Right, so this will make a, we should print NP data shape. Yeah, and since we have all those print statements, they're all there. Oh shoot, and I just realized that I probably overwrote my, uh, that's fine. I, I overwrote these ARM files, so in my mount, my disk, 
So uh, data. Let's see what's going on. This is gonna be a really small file now. Yeah, now it's only 1.6 megabytes. But now it's the format that I want. If I do, if I activate ASL and I do IPython and I import NumPy as NP, and we just NP load this file, feature data. Now the X shape, it's three dimensional, but like, why are we flattening it? Why are we flattening it just to then convert it back into the shape when we when we create our model? Why pigeonhole ourselves into having to remember all these dimensions when we could just save it as a NumPy array like this? Okay, so I like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun this. It's going to take a while. Ah. Eliado, thank you for the donation. You really didn't need to, but I appreciate it. Is the padding dealing with a few frames and the resizing deal with too many? I think the padding was the padding tin bear. No, the padding was just someone's first attempt at the notebook was to create, was just to split the frames into three different chunks or however many segments that you choose. Just split it into those number of segments and then average, uh, compute the average in the standard deviation. Actually, I think the first thing someone did, so this is like the weird history of the Kaggle notebooks on, and how they affect people, like how everyone is approaching this that reads public notebooks, which is probably an issue that I'm facing myself is that I'm reading all these public notebooks instead of starting from scratch myself. But what initially started was people realized, okay, the quickest way to create a model is just to take the average value of all these um, data points and the standard deviation of them and feed that straight into a model. And they did that. And they got like a, like a decent baseline. Then someone's like, okay, let's make this a little bit better by splitting that up into three different segments or making that a parameter that we can feed. And they chose three, I don't know, just split up into three segments and then average and standard deviation of those three. And then someone was a little smarter, or well, not smarter, but then someone built upon that and said, why don't we actually choose the number of frames and then just resize along that axis, no matter what size it is. But then for some reason they took that and they concatenated that this segment stuff on the end of it. And it may help that those, Segments mean and standard deviation is also part of this data, but we don't know for sure. It's kind of just like everyone's been building on top of each other's stuff and not really removing it and checking if it, if it helps to remove it. So maybe we can actually remove that and see if that makes it better. I don't know. Probably just a big waste of time. Uh, but uh, thanks everyone for watching. Just a reminder, we do have, I do have that GPU that we're going to be giving away two GPUs actually. So check out for that. I need to get on that, figure out what our competition is going to be about. And, um, yeah, you can join us on discord. Watch out for bots claiming to be me or scammers claiming to be me. If you see someone with my profile picture in a name that looks like it's mine and they're telling you to invest in crypto or something it's a complete scam it's not me so don't believe that uh but you should join discord um our youtube if you're watching on twitch is this put this in chat follow me on twitter let's see if this works And what else? Mm, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so thanks everyone for hanging out. I said I was gonna pay it forward because I got raided by some people today. Let's do a raid on Twitch. Who do we know that is streaming? Oh, someone's streaming drums. 
Who do we want to... Who's R.W. Grimm again? So let's go to software and game development here. Let's search for Python. There I am. 52 viewers. Pretty good. That's pretty, that's uh, more than we're used to here. Is there anyone that we should, anyone wants to recommend that we should uh, raid on this? First time watching live, I'm getting a data analysis master's degree. I'm worried much longer I'll be able to, I'm worried how much longer I will be able to use that degree. I think that if you're learning data analytics, you're going to be fine. You're just going to have different tools that you might be using with the new AI stuff. But I don't think that we're ever going to be comp taken completely out of the loop. It, at least not soon enough that I'm worried about it. Like you have to, you have to be able to adapt, but all right. So not many people actually coding in Python here. We got a boot camp going on. Let's go ahead and raid RW Grimm. Is he solving a Rubik's Cube? My man. Okay, so we're going to raid him. And I will see you guys next time. So let's go ahead and load up this raid. If you're following on Twitch right now, you're going to be sent over to RW Grimm. Give him a lot of energy and excitement coming from uh, Rob's slash Medallion Stallion's Twitch channel. And the rest of you guys on YouTube, go over to Twitch. It's a fun place. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye, everyone.